Hey everyone, Cole here from MTG Challengers, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering deck tech. Today, I'll be showing you my take on Esper Control. Esper, that is, white, blue, and black, is one of my favorite color combinations in the game, as it has traditionally had access to incredibly powerful and fun spells, for me, of course. Sadly, Brainstorm, Stoneforge Mystic, and Dark Confidant haven't been legal and standard for quite a while, so I've had to make do with the still powerful cards available in these colors. I decided to play a one Aetherling build for a couple of reasons. Aetherling is easily one of the best late game cards in standard right now, and this deck plays in very long game. I don't want to be completely threatless, but I also didn't want to choke on too many creatures, as this deck isn't that good with Mutaball. The main win conditions of the deck are 4 Jace, Architect of Thought, and 3 Elspeth, Sun's Champion. Jace is a very, very good card, with his minus 2 usually being game winning in of itself. Elspeth has shown her worth in the threatless blue-white control decks, and she doesn't disappoint here either. The tokens she creates come in handy, and her minus 3 will usually catch her opponent off guard. Moving on to the bulk of the deck, I decided to play 4 Thoughtseize. It's risky in a deck with no basic swamps, but the life loss is usually worth it to take away something scary from your opponent. 4 Heroes Downfall has become pretty standard in most black decks, and I don't deviate from that number here. The next few cards have become synonymous with the blue-white control strategy since they were printed. 4 Sphinx's Revelation is key in a meta where death happens so quickly, and the playset of Supreme Verdict is game over for many decks. Next up is 4 Dissolve, which is the only counterspell in the deck. Dissolve is very good, and I can honestly say it's one of my favorite cards to play in the deck. I was playing only two in the junk match, but I realized that I needed to go to the full place out of four. Three Detention Spears solves a few problems the deck otherwise couldn't deal with. Thassa, God of the Sea, Burning Earth, and Packrat being some of the biggest targets. I originally wasn't sold on the three far and away in the deck because I thought Devour Flesh would be a little bit better. However, in playing with it, I found it was a really good card and it's a blowout when it's fused. I've course run playsets of the two Scrylands available in the colors right now, which is Temple of Deceit and Temple of Silence, and I'm also playing all of the Shock Lands, which is Hallowed Fountain, Godless Shrine, and Watery Grave. I follow I followed it up with two Azorius Guildgates and I finished it out with two each of Islands and Plains. I'm playing 26 lands to ensure that I can get a land drop each turn. Swings of Revelation and all of the scrying that goes on the deck helps out a lot with that. That concludes the main deck, so now let's take a look at the sideboard. Three Dark Betrayal is really good against Mono Black. 4 Gainsay ensures that I have leverage in the Mono Blue and Mirror matchups. Then I have a collection of 1 ofs consisting of Negate, Jace, Memory Adept, Detention Sphere, and Far Away. These are here for the sake of consistency to ensure that the sideboard covers most, if not all, of the relevant decks in standard. Two Blood Baron of Viscopa can be backbreaking against some of the decks in this format, particularly white black midrange. Well, obviously. Finally, two Ashiok Nightmare Weaver is really good against the more aggressive decks, but I found that he didn't apply constant pressure in game ones against other decks. These switched places with the two Dissolve I originally had in the sideboard. And that concludes the deck tech. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more gameplays and deck techs, along with other content that comes along the way. I'm Cole from MTG Challengers, signing off.